Good Monday afternoon, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, joined by our executive weather producer, Terry Ellison. Terry, busy day. I would call it the weather department, but it's more like the science department. science department, department. yeah. yeah. Uh, what a way to start the week. Yeah. We, we, th we thought, all right, a couple little snow events to talk about, and yep. then all of a sudden, everybody started shaking. Yeah. Um, and we had one of the bigger earthquakes in the last few years here in New England. Absolutely, yeah. So let's hop into the weather graphics, and I'll show yeah. you what we're talking about. At 1022 this morning, we had a magnitude 3.8 earthquake just off the main coastline. Uh, this is about six miles off the coast of York, Maine, near Portsmouth, New Hampshire as well. Um, and as Terry mentioned, one of the bigger ones that we've seen, the last one of similar magnitude uh, or, or that caused um, any sort of damage was back in 1940. That was actually in central New Hampshire. So we've had these sort of smaller ones, sort of like a two, maybe a three, but when you start to get like 3.8, that's that's a for, big one. For our area, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously no, no damage done, but definitely was felt from north of Augusta, Maine, up through the northern mountains. Mountain, White Mountains to Vermont and lots of reports from Western Mass, Agawam, yep. Central Mass, down even to Martha's Vineyard in the Cape. People were saying they woke, you know, 1022, all of a sudden you don't really know what's happening at first because we're yeah. just not used to earthquakes. Everything starts shaking and, and we got reports of folks saying, was there a big crash? Was there a train An derailment? Explosion right. Or like and, that. And, and then come to find out, you know, everybody gets on their cell phones and starts figuring it out. And it, indeed, it was a 3.8 earthquake. Terry, what I think is interesting about our earthquakes versus the West Coast, obviously they have the ring of fire, very seismically active zone. But for us, we can actually feel those earthquakes a lot further away because of the bedrock, because of the history yeah of the ground underneath us. So despite the fact right. that this was only 3.8, it actually can be felt 10 times further away from the epicenter than maybe a similar magnitude on the West Coast. Yeah, and a great example of that this morning. I mean, you, yeah. who, I mean this, this, is, this is from the Western Observatory. You can see, uh, you don't need to be a scientist or a seismologist to see what, you know. Something what happened. Something <laughs> definitely <laughs> happened there at 1022. It actually recorded about two or so minutes of uh, movement, but I don't think anyone felt it for more than 10 seconds or so, right. thankfully. Um, and we spoke with a professor at the Western Observatory this morning, and he mentioned that he wouldn't be surprised if there were some minor aftershocks during yep. the day today. We haven't seen anything yet, but still something that you know could happen, but it would be very minor, we think, if that happens. Absolutely. That's something we always watch for is uh, we haven't gotten any reports of damage, um, but certainly we'll be watching that uh, closely. Uh, this was the shake map, Terry. We did feel that, as you mentioned, from Connecticut to Vermont. A north of Augusta felt hundreds of miles away. And so what caused this? We've got a lot of little fault zones that are pretty poorly mapped on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And sort of the only way that we find them is through an earthquake itself, right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, in this particular area, just off of the sea, uh, New Hampshire sea coast or Cape Ann, has been sort of a, it's been one of the more active, and it is active for New England yep. areas. Several events have gone down there, going in a very a large one back in 1755, yep. I believe it was, uh, just close to magnitude of six, so much more dramatic than today's. But um, yeah, scientists are kind of learning as we go as, with, as far as earthquake, earthquakes and the fault lines go here. Yeah, so what happens is, so this one possibly could be uh, really the, the fault at blame here is the Norim, Norumbega fault zone, which kind of is centered near Casco Bay, stretches as you go towards the seacoast of New Hampshire, but it falls within that Norumbega fault zone. Yep. And this is the same area, uh, Terry mentioned, the 1755 one that was probably the biggest in Boston history, mm -hmm. um, near a magnitude 6.0. And this specific fault is very brittle. So we don't, we have a lot of stressors and when it's brittle, it can move somewhat easily too. Yep. Um, the interesting thing I, I learned from the professor that you talked to from a Western Observatory is this is a one in five year event. And when you do the math, the way that we do it, and meteorology is that means any given year, that's a 20% chance of an earthquake. That's happening. a good way of describing it. A lot of folks, it's hard to wrap your head around. Okay, so every five years, we, well, not not exactly. I mean, if oh, if you take over the course of time, over the course of several hundred years, and you average it out, it happens about once. It's, it's, it's a term we use for snowstorms as well. Like, yeah. uh, say a, a, a foot of snow happens, it's on average once every X amount of years, yep. similar with earthquakes. Um, and we did have uh, the last, the, the professor was talking about one off the south shore, the south coast, about yep. five or six years ago as yep. well. Yep, so that was November of 2020. 
Um, I was on TV with that. I, I we pulled up a screenshot <laughs> yeah. of me pointing to it. Uh, that was near um, Narragansett Bay right. and uh, Buzzards Bay, where that one was. That was a 2.0 magnitude. Yeah. And when you talk about a magnitude 2.0 to let's say a magnitude four ish, mm -hmm. um, you're talking about a hundred times stronger. Uh, the 4.0 compared to the 2.0. Yeah, it makes a very big difference. Yeah. And, it can't, and it's hard now having, again, folks today felt the 3.8. Imagine doubling that. And it's really more, much more than doubling it to yeah. a 7 or an 8 or a 9. You can't even imagine what the impacts, you know, for like California or Haiti or folks that have, that have gone through these.